the city of Reggio Emilia is always cared about cyclists, be one of the Italian cities with the highest cycling model share, with over 20% of trips made by bike. In 2024, they announced plans to build a new network of cycling superhighways already common in countries like the Netherlands, Belgium and Germany. This network will consist of 9 lines with a total length of 83 kilometers. From what I know, this is one of the first back infrastructures of this kind in Italy. Will it be like other European countries? So The first line to open is the Cycling Superhighway South, or Line 1, and in late March 2024 I went there to try the first section of 5.6 km, connecting the city centre to the neighbourhood of Rivalta. Today I'm in Reggio Emilia, I will be testing out the new bicycle superhighway of the city. Only a section is currently open, the south bound. I rented a city bike from Decathlon store, since currently the city has no bike sharing service available. I want to be clear, this is not currently up to the standards of the Super Highways project, which requires paths to be at least 3 meters wide, well lit, as straight as possible, and with minimal conflict with pedestrians. So in the first phase, they opted for a ready-to-cycle solution, compatible with the timing of the next generation EU funds, featuring 3.7 km already upgraded with the rest, using existing or easy-to-build infrastructure like bike lanes, shared paths and cycle streets. The route starts from Ponte del Cataglio, which is currently inaccessible to the reconstruction efforts to connect this new infrastructure. Once completed by 2024, it will look like this. At the beginning of the route, I found a nice signboard showing the length and duration of the trip and other signs along the way displaying the entire map. You'll find these wayfinding signs at almost every intersection, but honestly it took me a long time to understand them and I guess they just work for those who live there and not for who's just visiting if you don't know the name of the streets. As a result, like it usually happens when I cycle in a new place for the first time, I got lost many times. I'm not even sure if I'm going the right way, unbelievable. Should I cross here? God. And it took more than an hour to ride the entire length. In the end, I managed to shoot the entire ride on the way back once I was more or less familiar with the directions. I still got lost though. Thus, this video should probably be titled An attempt to find the Lai Wine Cycle Highway. It could serve as a reminder to engineers around the world that directions must be straightforward and the infrastructure easily recognizable if you really want people to switch from driving to cycling. But anyway, let's start the ride from Rivalta with live commentary. You'll notice all my struggle to find directions. In the end, we'll analyze how long it took me and if the route is already competitive with driving. Of Rivalta. Let's see if I can stay on track. Okay, so the first section is a residential street with bike lanes, which actually are not really bike lanes, since even pedestrians can walk here. So let's just say it's a low speed area street with uh, a little bit of attention, safety for uh, more safety for bikes and people in general. So let's see. I mean, I tried to uh, follow the signs. I got lost many times. I'm not sure uh, what I did wrong, if it's not uh, well indicated, if they're still trying to fix some intersections, I just, uh, I wondered many times. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is a um, 30 km per hour road with priority to bicycles. I think I have to go left.
I mean, this is nice. Uh, raised uh, crossing looks very new. So this, uh, these are proper bike lanes. The cheap ones, of course, cheap infrastructure, but it works on the low traffic uh, streets. I guess this is a low traffic. Okay, wait, there's a sign here. It says I have to go. I didn't get the sign here uh, and I went right when he said I just had to go straight. I just don't get it, what it means. I could have had my phone on the bike stand to check the, the route or at least the street name. So I'm going left here. Stupid car. Of course I had priority. I guess this is the one, I'm not sure. This is horrible, very dangerous. God. Okay, another bike lane. Okay, where to now? Okay, there's a sign there. Okay, so he have to go crossing the, this street, which I don't know how it's called. I mean, what the hell is this? Biascari? I'm not sure. I really don't get it. What is this now? Left maybe? No indication whatsoever. I think I should call this um, video an attempt to find the super the cycle highway. I'm just guessing based <laughs> on the uh, visual uh, state of the road, of the bike infrastructure. If it's new, probably it's, it's where I have to go. So, <laughs> I'm guessing left. I mean, it is uh, kind of straight, I mean, wide enough. Uh, I'm not sure, I think I'm getting, it feels like a scam, I don't know. Okay, let's see this one. Uh, I guess this way, since it's on this side, the sign. Again, I had to go left, there was no sign. I mean, where the hell? God, 
card, it card. Okay, let's see. I came from here before. I think this this uh, infrastructure on the my on my right should be uh, mixed use path. Too bad it's not. There's there were no signs before, so. Okay, I can see the sign of the cycle highway, so I have to go straight, I guess. So let's get on this path. What's the point of this? And okay, now there, there's a sign when it ends. God. So I have to go on this. Okay, and then. Okay, it says to go straight to bed the, the street is either left or right. Oh, God, God, God. Let's just try. Okay, let's just try left. Uh, right, sorry. Okay, so this is where the new upgraded cycleway starts. Left for sure. This is new. Okay. I think I'm trying to understand a little bit uh, the way the sign works. But seriously, that's not the right way to do it. Okay, so left. Okay, I remember, I remember this one. This bike path I cycled before on this, so I'm sure I'm kind of on the right path, kind of. So I'm guessing this bike lane again. Of course, there is no indication. A great example that paint is not infrastructure. And of course, all the cars parked on the left side, the left bike lane. Another part, another car for me on my side of the road. Okay, now right because there is a, there's the sign. There's the sign. So I have to go straight for a little bit and then left. Let's see if I uh, got the sign right at this point. Oh yes, I remember this one. So basically this is the only of one of the two main intersection with cars. Can I have to wait for the green light, of course. Yeah, um, 
I guess that there are no other way for the funds available, but you shouldn't have a highway with um, with with. Um, I forgot to say crossing with lights. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember how it's called. Um, whatever. Okay, basically this is the um, the picture that you will see on every uh, announcement of the of the city, the highway, the super highway. This is the one, basically. Three hundred meters. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, it's nice, but it's nothing special. I mean, this is just the bare minimum of good bike inf bike infrastructure. And this is the other intersection. I guess with Via Francia or Via Inghilterra, Via Francia maybe. Very dangerous. Thank you. Okay, another section of the so called highway <laughs> okay another sign it says straight for a little bit and then uh, right I think I'm uh, I'm already at the end Yep, this is where I started, the first video that I showed you. Okay, so now left, sorry, right. Wait, wrong. Um, well, anyway, there's, um, sorry, there's a little bike lane on the right here. So let's recap. Without all the wrong turns and mistakes, it took me 20 minutes. You could probably slash a few minutes with an e-bike. Google Maps says that on peak hours it can take up to 16 minutes by car. If you consider you have to look for parking and you can access the city center, it is already a valid alternative to driving as it is. But when it comes to quality, hmm, things can be improved. It's mostly just paint but they will upgrade them according to plans. The new paths do look promising, being unusually wide. However, I'm very skeptical about the limited space for pedestrians or the lack thereof in these residential streets. It's almost certain you will encounter people walking on those paths without any clear high quality alternative. So I think they missed this opportunity to improve walkability, especially here that the bike path is directly on the driveways. It's nice to finally see some proper crossings like these ones, where there's enough space for cycling both ways and for pedestrians, as well as some simple but effective tools to protect you from cars or these foot rests. Other intersections really need to be upgraded, and cycling near greenery and away from cars is always appreciated. You have to keep in mind that Italy is decades behind other European countries when it comes to bike infra and sustainable mobility in general, so it's great to see a city like Reggio Emilia trying to make things right for once. It'll be interesting to see how the entire ride is going to look once the entire stretch is upgraded. If you're watching from Northern Europe or North America, I'm curious to know what you think. Do you think this is like going back in time? Or would it be a miracle if your city had at least this? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.